We already know that Estonia sometimes produce one of the greatest drivers, even though they didn't reach Formula 1. For example, Marco Asmar, the first Estonian driver to test a Formula 1 car, Kevin Corius, Ralph Aaron, and his brother Paul Aaron, and who could be in line for Formula 1 in the next of 4 years later. But there's one driver that next season could be. Let's see what Yuri Vips can do this season. Yuri Vips, born in 10th of August 2000 in Tallinn, Estonia. One of the brightest kids who appears in Estonia's Got Talent for this. While his math still going on well, till now, Yuri Vips, like any other Formula 1 and Formula 2 and any other drivers, basically, done karting at the age of very young. He started karting in 2011 till 2016, where he began his maiden Formula racing career in Formula 4 Italy and ADEC Formula 4 with Prima Power Team. Well, they didn't focus much on the Italian one, but obviously the main campaign is in Germany with his teammate Mick Schumacher and Juan Manuel Correa. His first year in Italian Formula 4 did not bad, to be honest, even though there's no weights and anything at all, but with 5 podiums, he managed to get 6th place. But in ADEC Formula 4, he managed to get his first win, 2 pole positions, 3 fast laps, and 8 podiums in total with 5th place in the standings. Well, 5th place is not bad as well, but he just loses out to Joey Molson, Mick Schumacher, Mike David Ottman, Thomas Preening, Kim Louis Schramm, which I believe you only know one driver only in that lineup. For next season, he still managed to drive with the same team, Prime Power Team, and competes in the same series, ADEC Formula 4. But the Italian Formula 4, he did but just a guest appearance. His teammate still the same with Juan Manuel Correa, Marcus Armstrong. They both fight till the last race, where Yuri Vips is the eventual champion, winning by a couple of points and by two wins, but amazed with seven podiums in total, where he won the champion, where he beats the likes of his teammate Marcus Armstrong and also Filip Drugovic and Liam Zendeli. After he won the title in 2017, he managed to get a couple of races in European Formula 3 with Morpark as a guest driver. Well, he didn't do much in the end. It, this is as a learning curve for him because in 2018, same series, but this time is full time with the same team. With his teammate, Dan Dictum is the most competitive one. Well, the likes of David Scherer and Jordan Everdeen, Marino Sato, and Sebastian Fernandez isn't doing much. But in the end, Yuri Vips did massively well, you can say. Just almost win the rookie title but lose out to Rob Schwartzman after so many debacles on Prima. We already know this is a little bit travesty for some of you. Well, he did manage to get a couple of wins. Four, three podiums, six fastest laps, and eight podiums in total. Well, fourth place is okay. But I believe what he can do, he could be in top 3 if there's no Prama, if you know what I mean. And also, at the end of season, before the Macau Grand Prix, Red Bull take a gamble on Yuri Vips. Even though that season, Macau Grand Prix didn't do well, but at least Red Bull puts him in Formula 3 again. Slash GP3 infused it. Drives for a new team, high tech Grand Prix, with his teammate Leonardo Pulcini, yeah. There's a little bit pressure because there's so many talented drivers in that series as well. Who could win the title and who could be the next driver to be in Formula 1 sort of blah 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 like that. Remember when that's the massive hype. I still remember this season is one of the best line of drivers. Because you got like the Formula Renault 2.0 champion, Max Futro, along with Christian Lungard and Yifeye. Both of these drivers are coming from Renault Sports Academy. 
and also Eurovision himself with Liam Lawson, the newly recent Red Bull Drops Academy, along with Yuki Tsunoda from Formula 4 Japan Championship winner, and also his title contender at the time, Marcus Armstrong and Rob Schwarzman with Ferrari Drops Academy. And that season was one of the best seasons in my opinion. So, what did he do? He managed to get fourth again, losing out to the trio of Premas of Jandro Valla, Marcus Armstrong, and the eventual champion, Rob Schwarzman. He did manage to get a couple of wins again, like three wins, one pole position, one fast slap, and four podiums. And his biggest drive of all is the 2019 Macau Grand Prix, where he managed to link up a pole position and almost win the race until on this lap, Richard was sure passed him to get the win. There's a problem with the car, and that's where the luck runs out strikes. Well, he did compete as well in Super Formula with Tim Hugan, where he replaces Dan Tictum, who replaced by Pato Award, and in the end, replaced by Yuri Phipps. And after that, how about Marco thinking again? I'm gonna get another gamble on this kid. We gotta see your Vips can make it in Japan or not. Let's see. Your Vips will drive with Tim Hugan again for 2020 Super Formula. Yeah, about 2020. We already know. It's the pandemic. Prevents everything. You cannot go anywhere. Seasons have to be aborted until June, July. So this is a little bit hard for your Vips because you cannot go to Japan because there's border restrictions and visa problems. So in the end, his Super Formula race hard for him to get it. He needs other options. There's no other options. There's no chance to be honest. Because there's no seats in Formula 2. There's no proper one. And also, there's no proper competitive team that will race until in Formula Regional European Championship. Before the merger, obviously. The seat itself, you can say, Easiest way to get super license points. As you already know, the grid is very small and there's not much team. But we need to remember, there's three drivers that compete with Prama and eventually they're gonna be conquering top three. Yes, there's one driver in Prama as well, but she didn't do well. We already know, right? Yuri Vip joins up with KIC Morsport and he did a couple of races, managed to get a couple of podiums as well no wins but he has to scrap up the formula regional because in the end he finally get a formula to sit because sean glyle he injured himself due to unfortunate accident thus your replace him in spa Shop, monza and also in tuscan and that's where he get his first points in formula 2 and also a podium after that he managed to get 16 place in the standings not bad to be honest. So there's a chance for Yuri to go back to Japan, but that chance is over in the end because Red Bull picked him up as a test reserve driver for the Turkish Grand Prix. That's a little bit shock for us because we thought he doesn't have the necessary super license, but in the end, he managed to get somehow because there's some testing behind the doors in the end. So obviously, 2030 was a catastrophe for Yuri Vips. What will he do in 2021? In the end, obviously with Japan's border streak, Red Bull didn't dare to put their drivers there. So they put back in Formula 2 with Hyder Grand Prix, his teammate Liam Lawson, a fellow Red Bull junior team. In the first round, he awfully worse because obviously due to of his bad luck and obviously from the team's bad car that we already know that Formula 2 cars isn't that great. But he managed to bounce back in Monaco, getting his first fastest lap, his podium, and in the next round in Baku, he won back-to-back -back races in Sprint Race 2 and Feature Race 1. And he managed to collecting some points in the end until the bad day in Monza. And after that, it's just from the car itself, unlucky from crash and everything like that. And also, not from his fault, to be honest. He did get only that 2 wins in Baku, 1 fast lap, and 6 podiums in total, 
with 6 plays. Just lose out to Theo Pochel by 20 points and ahead of Jehan Ruvala by 10 points. But that's not good enough to be in Formula 1 obviously. Yuki Tsunoda is still in Formula 1 and must be his final year to prove himself that he needs to be in Formula 1 as the first Estonian driver to be. But the problem is he's in high tech again. And with his unlucky mate again, Marcus Armstrong in the same seat, we could see something different for this season. Can high tech produce a good car? Because if cannot produce a good car, if there's some reliability issues there, if there's something problem, it will prevent Yuri from getting his first Formula 1 race seat in the end, right? I don't want to see him fail this season. I put him as a top 3 contender, but I don't think he will win the Formula 2 or let's say be in top 3 because there's another draft that really next in on that Red Bull slash Avatar seat. If he can do well, let's be. Hopefully, he can do well. That's all. I want him to be in Formula 1 because obviously, who doesn't want to have a first Estonian driver to be in Formula 1, right? So what do you guys think? Is Yuri Vips deserves to be in Formula 1 next season? Or how do you rate Yuri Vips as a driver? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys. Whatever, to be honest. I'm Artish Feeder.